morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning. And we give a special welcome to our visitors. If you're new in the Springfield Clark County area, are looking for new church home, we invite you to make St. John your new church home. This being the third Sunday of the month and celebration of communion, all of your service is in your worship bulletin except for the hymns. So you'll only need the red hymnal in your pew for the singing of the hymns, and they are the large numbers at the top of the page from the middle of the book to the end of it. So at this time, I'd ask that you turn to page two in your worship bulletin to the order of confession and forgiveness. And I invite those who can without difficulty uh, to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not looked with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Church, Springfield, Ohio. We're happy that you're watching us on YouTube. Click on YouTube and show other people how to click on. Then just Google up on uh, Google St. John's Lutheran Church. We're very happy to have you worship with us today. This is the day after Valentine's Day, the 15th of February, 2015, Transfiguration Sunday. This hymn is in honor of Transfiguration Sunday. How uh, good Lord to be here. Written by Joseph Robinson, 1800s. Music by Henry Mercer, we celebrate that the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. And then Holy then Lent starts after that. Lent means spring. Lent starts after the last Sunday. And then this is the last Sunday we'll have the Alleluia's and the Gloria. This will be Lent. We will have we see the acolytes now. We see the procession of the choir. Jesus is coming in with us. He's worshiping with us. I thank God that I'm still alive. I had a near-death experience this past week. My kidneys shut down, but they're opening up. I thank you for your prayers. I'm your announcer, Dr. Sally Evan. How good Lord it is to be here.
Parish Episcopal Psalter. Do you know that today the Lord 
Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them. And they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elijah, Tell me what I may use for you, before I am taken from you. Elijah said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching, crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and his horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We just heard Steve Clark reading the scripture, and he'll also read the second lesson. Now we have Psalm 50, which we're singing responsively. This is the Transfiguration of Our Lord, February the 15th, 2015. This will be the last time until the end of Lent. We're preparing our hallelujahs and we'll celebrate Lent, which means spring. Our pastor is getting ready to read the scripture. It has to do with the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ. The last Sunday before Lent, Ash Wednesday is Wednesday night. We invite you to worship with us at 7 o'clock this evening. Wednesday evening, Ash Wednesday. Imposition of the ashes and Holy Communion.
to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with him anymore than only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> A couple of announcements to share with you, of course, a reminder that this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. We will have services at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., uh, so please make plans to join us from looking at the weather. It's supposed to be cold that day, but it's not supposed to be any snow or ice, so uh, just bundle up and join us either 2 or 7 uh, PM for the observance of Ash Wednesday in the beginning of Lent. The following Wednesday, the 25th, we will have our beginning of our soup and sandwich suppers at 6, followed by worship here in the sanctuary at 7. Uh, also, I will be having a 2 o'clock uh, service as we examine the seven last words of Christ from the cross throughout this Lent season uh, during our Wednesday night worship and culminating with Holy Week. Uh, with Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. So Lent is now upon us uh, and begins this Wednesday, so please join us for those uh, services. Also, as I mentioned last week, there are Lenten devotionals around the building on different tables. Feel free to take one home for your own uh, Lenten meditation uh, during the season. Also, there are some Lenten coin folders. If you would like to take one of the coin folders home, each day put a quarter or, or a dollar or whatever in the slots each day and bring it back then on Easter Sunday uh, when Lent is concluded. This time it has now that you give your attention to our clock. <coughs> by Vicki Perks. The theme is Transfiguration of Our Lord. January the, this is February the 15th, day after uh, Valentine's Day, 2015. We invite you to come Ash Wednesday, two o'clock and seven o'clock. St. John's Lutheran, Springfield, Ohio.
mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. By the time of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt's fourth term in office, he had become tired of always having to flash that smile of his and shake hands with people at the many receptions they would have at the White House. And so he decided one night to play, have a little test to see if the people coming through the line actually listened to what he had to say. So the night of the reception came up and people were coming up to President Roosevelt and he would flash in that big smile and as they shook his hand, he would say to them, I murdered my grandmother this morning. The people would reply with words such as, how lovely. Or they would say, keep doing that good job in you, Mr. President. <laughs> on and on it went until the very last person in line. And that person happened to be a foreign diplomat. So he came up to President Roosevelt, and President Roosevelt smiled at him, shook his hand, and said, I killed my grandmother this morning. To which the diplomat leaned over in his ear and he said, Mr. President, I'm sure she had it coming to her. <laughs> <laughs> Listening. Listening is a very important part of daily life. Amen. Listening is important because if we are just hearing, we oftentimes miss the message. Now, most of you know my office is on the third floor on the corner, uh, overlooking one set of windows overlook the Larry parking lot, the other set of windows I can see the hospital. Every day people go by my office and sometimes I hear them talking, sometimes they're arguing, sometimes somebody's going by and they're singing. And then I hear the traffic and everything else, but I'm hearing them, but I'm not listening because I'm busy concentrating on whatever it is I'm preparing for at that time. So there is a hearing, and just like last Friday, some of you know there was a demonstration uh, in front of the hospital down there on the street. And they had music playing, and they had somebody every now and then talking through a bullhorn. I don't have any idea what they said because I was hearing but not listening until they played a song from my youth, from my days of high school and college. And when I heard that song, I stopped and listened. And as I listened, all these memories came back as to what I was doing when that song was a number one song on the radio back in those good old school days, as we call them. But oftentimes, people are just hearing. They're not listening. Yet today, in our gospel lesson from that ninth chapter, the gospel according to St. Mark, we have recorded for us what is called the transfiguration of our Lord. It is the last time that God affirms Jesus vocally so that Peter, James, and John can hear before Jesus enters into Jerusalem for the last time. Before he begins his passion, his suffering and death. Before he's betrayed, handed over to evil men, where he is beaten and then crucified for the sins of the world. Where his death upon that cross pays the debt of sin that we owe for the sins we commit against God. On that third day, rising again from the dead. And then on 40 days later, ascending into heaven, where he sits to come again to judge the living and the dead. And as we read of this transfiguration, there's a very important lesson for us. And that is when, after Elijah and Moses appear to Jesus, representing the law and the prophets, and after Peter, who is terrified, asks if Jesus asked Jesus if he wants him to build a couple of tents for him. I don't know if he thought they were having an overnight camping spree or a three-day revival or what, so they would need shelter. After all this, a cloud overshadows him. And from that cloud comes the words of God the Father. And he says, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Listen. Not hearing, listen. The Greek word that we translate as listen is a Greek word that literally means to obey someone. 
It means to perform what they tell you or to put into your daily life what they instruct you. And so God is literally saying, this is my beloved son. Obey him and perform what he says. Carry out what he teaches you. And these words were not just for Peter, James, and John, but they're for the entire church, for the entire community of believers. And so when we are to follow that instruction, to listen, but so often we just hear. Even the church today, Many instances of the church today is not listening to our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not listening to the direction of the Holy Spirit. It is simply hearing and being overwhelmed with its business. Too often today the church is so busy in activities that were never intended for the church to do. Or so often today the church is so busy just trying to survive and pay the bills that we're not listening to the direction of the Holy Spirit. We're not listening to our Lord Jesus Christ and what He is telling us we are to be doing. <clears throat> and so from this transfiguration event, there are some important lessons we learn. And the first is that we must take time to listen to God. We must take time to listen to our Lord Jesus Christ. We must take time to listen to the direction of the Holy Spirit. And someone may say, well, preacher, I try to listen for God, but I haven't heard anything. Well, maybe the problem is not that God isn't talking. The problem is you're not really taking the time. Mm -hmm. You're not setting aside time to be in communication with God. As one theologian has said, quote, God speaks to those who take time to listen to him. Notice that. Importance in the quote. Those who take the time. How many times do we read in the Gospels about Jesus withdrawing from the disciples and from the crowds to go off by himself and to be alone with his heavenly Father? How often do we read of Jesus going to some lonely place so he can pray? So he can listen to his father. We in our everyday lives become so busy. Do we take the time? Do we take that time to listen to God and listen to what he has to say? Thanks to the wonderful invention of the internet, I am able to find information that otherwise I probably wouldn't learn. And one of those valuable sites on the internet I have discovered is a site from the Orthodox Church in America. And it's very interesting that in Orthodox Christianity, or the Eastern Church as we often refer to it, Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Serbian, Romanian, Bulgarian, Hungarian, Albanian, and so forth, that it is expected of every Orthodox person, follower of Jesus, to have a prayer corner in their house. And on this site, they often show pictures that have been sent in by people of their prayer corner. And what you usually see is a table set up in a corner. Above on the wall, in the center of the wall where the prayer corner is, will be a crucifix. And then there will be some icons. Usually one of the icons is what is known as a Theotokos. That is a picture of Mary, the mother of our Lord, holding the baby Jesus. It's called Theotokos, the God-bearer. Mary is the bearer of our Lord Jesus Christ. There may be an icon of, of Jesus or an icon of one of the apostles or whatever. Then on the table, there'll be a freestanding crucifix in the middle, maybe votive candles on either side, maybe some more icons, and then will be their daily prayer book and their Bible. And it is expected that every day the Orthodox Christian takes time to go to that prayer corner to commune with God, to listen to what God has to say. How many of us have a prayer corner in our house? How many of us set aside a certain part of every day to be sure and talk to God so that we can listen to Him? 
so that we can hear what he is saying to us or wants to say to us. So it takes time. And that's the first lesson we learn from today is that it takes time to listen. You have to do it purposely. The second thing we learn is that we must listen to our Lord even when we don't like the message. And every time you speak to our Lord Jesus Christ, every time you appeal to the uh, Holy Spirit for direction, every time you speak to God, you're not going to always hear something you want to hear. The Old Testament is filled with examples of Israel receiving the word from God. But then it came. Because they didn't like what God had to say. This was especially true after the United Kingdom of David and Solomon had divided into the Northern Kingdom Israel and the Southern Kingdom Judah. The Northern Kingdom Israel by Jesus' day is what we know as Samaria. The Southern Kingdom Judah is what we know in Jesus' day as the Roman province of Judea ruled in, during Jesus' ministry by Pontius Pilate. Now, prophets would come to the northern and southern kingdoms, giving them God's message, telling them to change, telling them to do away with their idols and their pagan rituals and so forth, and they didn't want to hear it, so they just ignored the message. It got so bad in northern, the northern kingdom of Israel, that the prophet Amos is given a message by God to deliver to the people of Israel. Eighth chapter of the book of Amos, the eleventh verse. Amos says these words. Quote, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. End of quote. God is patient. God is loving. God wants nothing more than us to be in relationship with him. But if we continue to ignore him, if we continue to turn our back on the message he has given us, eventually the day could come when we will have a famine for his work. There will be no more preachers preaching. There will be no more copies of scripture to read. For God will make a famine because we didn't want to listen to his word because we didn't like it. God speaks to us through our study of his word. God speaks to us through Sunday school class. God speaks to us through Bible study. God speaks to us through worship. God speaks to us in many ways, but we have to accept the message he gives us. There was a park ranger in Yellowstone National Park, and he was taking a group of hikers on a hike to one of the fire watch tires that are all scattered throughout the park where lookouts look to make sure there are no forest fires starting. And so as he was leading the hike, he was pointing out the different plants and animals in the park, and he kept getting messages over his two-way radio that he had with him, and they were interfering with what he was saying to people, so he put the radio off. They continued on their hike, and as they were approaching the fire tire, almost breath out of breath came the lookout saying to the ranger, how come you have not responded to the messages we sent over your radio? And the ranger said, well, I didn't hear any messages. I turned it off. And the lookout said, we've been trying to get in touch with you because a grizzly bear has been stalking your group from the time that you took off. Now that group was lucky. The ranger had turned his back on the messages he was supposed to be receiving to warn them to change direction or change what they were doing so that they could lose that grizzly bear. But instead, because he thought his words were more important than his superior's words, he had turned the radio off and put in peril his life and the life of all those hikers. And so it is with God. When we turn our back on his word because we don't like it. When he sends us a message and we aren't happy with that message, 
So we ignore it. We put our life in peril and the life of those around us. And what happened in the northern kingdom of Israel was that in 722 B.C. the Assyrians crushed them and carried them off into exile. Made them assimilate with the other peoples they had conquered and with the Assyrians. So that by Jesus' day, those who had filtered back to the northern kingdom were known as the Samaritans. The people whom the Jews were in bitter conflict with. Because they could not consider them to anymore be members of the covenant. And so it is important, not only that we take time to listen to God's word, but that we listen to it even when we don't like the message. And the third thing is that when we listen, we must be sure we understand the message. See, if you're just hearing and not listening, then you can make the message say what you want it to say. For example, an old country preacher back home went to visit one of his parishioners who was in the hospital. And as he visited with him, he said, Brother Jones, your worst enemy is bourbon. To which Brother Jim replied, or Brother Jones replied, Pastor, just last week in the pulpit, you said we're to love our enemies. To which the pastor responded, So I did. But I didn't even come close to telling you you're to swallow them. That fellow was getting the message that he wanted to hear. He wasn't listening. He was just hearing. He heard the pastor say, love your enemies. The pastor was saying bourbon was his enemy because he was becoming addicted to it. But he heard, love your enemies. So why should he give it up? The pastor never said to swallow the enemy. He said just to love. So we must listen. Not just hear. We must listen to what Jesus is saying. We must listen to what God the Father is saying to us. We must listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. For if not, we can end up on the wrong path. Peter turned to John because of their terror of seeing Jesus so bright and seeing Moses and Elijah and then hearing that word of God come from the clouds. They were so frightened. They had no idea what they were to be listening to. And they weren't listening because they wanted to build three booths to make this a permanent experience. So be sure you're not just here. Make sure you are listening. One person has said, quote, the first step to wisdom is silence. The second step is listening. In the book. Notice. To gain wisdom, first you are silent so you can hear, and then you listen. Listen so you understand the message. Listen so you know what is being said. So God is talking to you. Our Lord Jesus Christ wants to communicate with you. The Holy Spirit has direction for your life, but if you don't take the time, if you turn your back on the message because you don't like what it says, or you misunderstand it because you're hearing and not listening, you'll miss out on the message altogether and put your life and possibly the life of others in peril. So listen. Listen to what the Lord God is telling you. Listen to what Jesus is saying to you. Listen to the direction of the Holy Spirit. And by listening to God's word, you will be able to live life and live it abundantly. Amen. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. That's that you please stand and turn to page 6 in your worship bulletin. <coughs> the words of the Nicene Creed and with the whole church. We confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ.
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and made us a son of God, was an incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, is which the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. Who has spoken through the cross? We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We live up the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. The glory of the Father is revealed in His Son. Our Lord Jesus Christ, standing in the light of the glory, we pray for the church, the world, and all who yearn for the light that overcomes the world of darkness. Our response today is light in our darkness. Your glory, Father, is too great for us to bear. So you sent your only begotten Son, true light for true light and to the world to reveal to us your glory in a way that we can safely behold. Even so, for reasons of sin, shame, or grief, we seek refuge in darkness. Seek us out, dear Father, and bring us from darkness into your holy light, that we may shine with your reflected glory and enlighten those caught in deep darkness. Lord, in your mercy, open our hearts. Your mercy, O Lord, is great, and so we do not lose heart as we struggle against our sin in the world. To those that were responsible for the governance of nations and all who administer our towns and cities or judge disputes, give a spirit like that of Moses, that they may faithfully maintain the covenant between state and citizen. Lord, in your mercy. Like in your heart. Lord, like Elijah and Moses, your servants of old, may reflect your holy life, giving light in times of both dark and tartaric and terror. Guide and preserve in every way that those who serve our communities are as police, emergency, medical personnel, or in the armed services. May they work always with integrity. And may they have the respect of those whose lives they protect. Lord, in your mercy. Light in our darkness. O Lord, our only true hope is in you. For you gave your Son to destroy sin and death. Give an extra portion of your Holy Spirit to those who suffer from age, disease, grief, discretion, or loss. May they not despair. But look to you for healing and life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in For those soon to see your glory face to face, we pray for the faith in your ongoing and everlasting goodness. Bless all who mourn with such our certain hope in the resurrection and the reunion with their loved ones. Sustain us who struggle day by day to live in faith, hope, and love. That we may someday join you and your saints in the light everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Light in our hearts. Praising your glory, that you, your Son and Holy Spirit, we give ourselves and all for whom we pray into your hands, trusting in your steadfast compassion for those whom you love. Amen. You may be seen. <coughs> So now time for our offering.
You see the acolytes coming up to carry the offering plates to the ushers today. We have Mike and Debbie Cochran who are the ushers. Steve Clark was the reader. And uh, we have the two acolytes passing the offering plates to Mike and Debbie Cochran. This is St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. We invite you to come worship with us. We have repented of our sins. We've confessed. We've said our confession. We believe. We love God. We love one another. We are ministers to Christ. We bring His love into the world. We're His hands and feet. We serve 8,000 meals a month here. People are dedicated, give their entire lives to helping the poor in the neighborhood. We invite you to come. Ash Wednesday and we'll celebrate the imposition of the ashes. We'll receive today the body and blood of Jesus Christ as he's died on the cross. We believe in the real presence as he has said that he'd be present with us and when we receive his body and blood, we receive eternal life and he'll never be separated from us. That's the promise that we have. No matter what we do, God will always be with us. Worship assistance today, Steve Clark and Marcella Johnson. Be helping with the worship service. We have some of the best people you'll ever meet here if you'll come here to, to our church service, 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, 2 o'clock this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, 7 o'clock Ash Wednesday services. The rest of Ash Wednesday, 6 o'clock we'll eat. 7 o'clock we'll have service. We're meditating on the last words of Christ from the cross. You see Debbie Cochran in the front. I'm Dr. Sally Abbott, your announcer. Linda Fox is your videographer. We're getting ready to have Holy Communion holy time we invite you to pray for all those who are coming forward to receive the body and blood of jesus christ that you may virtually receive the body and blood of jesus christ as you have repented believed love god and love your neighbor
us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. And the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant, my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his sanitary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we, and all who share in the body and blood of Christ, may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your sins. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
very holy time when we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to save us from sins. We receive the creator of the universe. The, we are his masterpieces. We commune with him. He gives us the opportunity to communicate with him. And when we die, we will see him face to face. Pastor is now receiving the elements, Holy Communion, and blessing the congregation. By our Lord Jesus Christ, in his precious blood, strengthen, preserve, and true faith for the life eternal. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift of faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We conclude our celebration with Hallelujah's Song of Gladness, <coughs> number 318, in the back of the church. Our closing hymn is Hallelujah, Song of Gladness, translated by John Mason Neal. He lived in the early 1800s. He translated many Latin hymns. It's an ancient hymn from the 11th century. John Mason Neal uh, did not like the modern hymns, but he loved the Latin hymns. He's a great translator. Alleluia, Song of Gladness. A very appropriate hymn for the last Sunday before Lent as we put the Alleluia's away. Meditate more on spring, on penance, and Lent. Alleluia, Song of Gladness. Written by John, translated by John Mason Neal, Anglican Parson in the early 18th century. Lived in England. of Jesus' resurrected body See, overhanging our altar. He's prophet, priest, and king. We begin to celebrate his role 
in the Trinity during Lent, starting Ash Wednesday. Thank you for watching St. John's on YouTube. Tune in next Sunday, just go on to Google, type in YouTube, and then St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. We're happy to bring you this service. Our church offers a Christian school program for three and four nursery and pre-K. Please tune in anytime. Thank you for joining our worship this Lord's Day. Come and worship with us in the pew. We'd love to have you. We miss you. We need you. And we have our 8 o'clock service and we have our 10.30 service every Sunday. And during Lent we have soup and sandwich at um, 6 o'clock and services at 7. And the last words of Christ. Also 2 o'clock service in the afternoon. I hope and pray that God will continue to bless you. Keep you this day and all your days. We'll pray for you on your announcer, Dr. Sally Abbott. Linda Fox is your uh, videographer. Continue to pray for us. Continue to watch us on YouTube. Share our service. Bring another to Christ. You'll, ne you'll never regret it. Eternal life. Our morning service is 8 a.m., 10.30 a.m. We're happy to have you worship with us anytime. This is Sunday, February the 15th, 2015. This is the, we're celebrating Transfiguration. Beginning of Lent is Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. We're happy to see you. We look forward to seeing you there.